안녕하세요. 제 이름은 남입니다. Hi, it's Nami, and today I'm going to talk about my experience waiting 25 hours before the show started of BTS Love Yourself World Tour for my GA standing ticket. I did camp out overnight after I got my ticket resale from a third party ticket selling site. Um, I did have to plan with who I was going on how we're going to arrange this. My army 동생 who I was gonna go to the concert with wasn't able to go so I actually had to sell her ticket and a viewer ended up buying it because we both had no one to go with Erica and I decided to go together she flew from Boston Michael was telling me that he saw on the news of army in LA who were camping out for five days five days and I was kind of scared like there will be people who are waiting like long long time and we won't be able to get a good view so we kind of decided like last minute okay yeah let's try camping out and so I brought like a whole bunch of stuff like sleeping bag, three blankets, a beach mat. <laughs> I don't have a... Oh, I do have a yoga mat. I could have taken my yoga mat. Could have taken my yoga mat. It would have been like less painful. But um, things like yoga mats, air mattresses, or like memory foam mats are really helpful as well. Some extra clothes, some snacks, basically like what you would take when you actually go camping in a forest bring stuff as if you're gonna be in the middle of nowhere because you literally will be in the middle of nowhere on the street just waiting for hours we got to the venue the day before at like 6 or 6 30 and there were already a lot of people waiting we can't actually wait on the venue property because there's like show going on and it'll be like fire hazard if there's too many people in one place so we had to start waiting across the street on this random block the line started like near the venue and it wrapped around this block we found our waiting spot like halfway through the second side of the block after like one turn of the corner and we set up my beach mat <laughs> and everything like on the grass it started to get a little bit chilly so we brought out the blankets and then it started to get a little bit colder than that and we kind of wanted to lie down so we had only one sleeping bag i was like you know i have an idea why don't we just both get in the sleeping bag and had to get like into the sleeping bag and wiggle ourselves oh in crying. and we were both laughing our heads off i was crying because of how hilarious and how like tight we were squashed i was telling the people in line ahead and behind us like we just met today <laughs> But I felt really close to her because her and her sister are also viewers and they're like, oh, not your fans. So then I was like, oh, like already, like even though we've never met in person, like me and you, I feel like I'm already really close with you because I feel like I share a lot of myself with you and I feel like I read a lot of things that you comment. That really helps me feel like a lot closer to you because I kind of get to know your experiences and things that you want to share with us. So thank you for always like taking your time to watch our videos and like comment. I know I always say this, but so we were kind of both dozing in and out of sleep because we we're both tired. She only slept four hours because she was packing and I only slept like an hour and a half because I was working. And then all of a sudden, like people just suddenly started getting up and running and they were like what like are people lining up at the venue now so we kind of like panicked Everyone and then we had to get all of like our stuff line. and start running and, like, <laughs> too we because we have to get our spot right in our line i was wearing my platforms which are like three inches tall like, and i actually didn't bring any running shoes which i should have done and brought my platforms to change into for the concert it's definitely easier to change so bring some running shoes if you were planning to camp out and wear comfortable clothing but i was like falling i was like i was tripping over myself like four times because i was kind of in and out of sleep also I had all this stuff to carry also i was wearing these tall platforms it was kind of a mess but we got into the line and we were so far from the door like we were basically at the end of the line we were like this is not our spot i was really worried because i was like we came here and we waited here five hours like people are just coming now and they're like getting ahead too we heard from other people in the line that you should stick with the people in front of you and behind you in line that you recognize from waiting earlier in the day that way we can organize ourselves and make our line more official to ensure that it's fair for everyone who had been waiting there was a list that was being created by the first group of people in line and they were taking down names starting i think friday morning for the sunday night show but after about 200 people they stopped doing that because those people also went into the saturday concert and then when they came back they didn't really want to take responsibility of the line anymore so we didn't know that there was a list like an unofficial list that we needed to put our name under so that our spot will be ensured and like our time 
and hours waiting wouldn't be wasted. So that group of people were working at the front of the line to try to organize the people on the list and try to rearrange people according to the list. And I think a lot of people at the back were kind of worried, especially the people who were not on the list, including me. So we were informed to go find the people who we recognize in line before and after us. The people who were before us had gone to find the people who were in front of them, which ended up like being halfway through the line. We were closer to the end. We went to go find them because you have to stick together with the people that you recognize so that um, there's that credibility. And it's kind of like a chain link system where like you stick to the people who are before you and then they stick to people before them and they stick to the people before them. And then it creates a honor system where people who just got there can't cut in in front of you because like literally it's it's a strong chain of accountability and like trust because everyone will recognize who they were waiting with for hours and so about an hour passed by and like it's taking long for the unofficial list to be like organized at the front by the time we were like a third of the way through the line there had formed like this big clump of people because everyone's trying to find the people who they were close to and during that time um i was actually being attacked on twitter let me read you the tweets are you laughing <laughs> There weren't that many people attacking me, just like three, two, three people. One of them was very respectful because she um, is a respectable librarian, an older lady. So she was very respectful about it. But I felt like really, I don't know, attacked. I was basically attacked. And I understand because they're feeling anxious as well. And like everyone's feeling anxious. Everyone wants to make sure that they get the line that they deserve uh, based on the time that they were waiting, right? I have a total of 15 screenshots, so please bear with me. Initially, someone by the name S had said, hey, why do you think it's okay for you to cut in line? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. When other people have been waiting for hours? Question mark. Just because you think you are famous? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. So initially, like when I'm getting attacked, um, I always have the same kind of thought process, whether it's like through comments or through tweets or through Instagram or in my in person. I've never really gotten attacked like to my face before. Um, actually, I have. I have gotten attacked to my face um, for being a young mom, for being Asian and for being a girl. So um, I usually have the same thought process. Of course, I'm like taken aback like. Is, isn't there a better way you can deliver your message without any assumptions or without any prejudice? I understand that you're anxious and you are worried and you feel like injustice. But at the same time, like, are, isn't everyone here feeling that way as well? Like, we should relate to each other as people and see each other in the same level and come and try to reach each other the same way you know what I mean but then I get this tweet and like initially I'm kind of like okay how do I respond to this wisely um, because I just feel misunderstood and also injustice as well from the assumptions obviously so what I said is we have been waiting for hours as well and I'm hearing we are waiting for the unofficial list to be officiated through honor system for those after 200th place so we have to find those who we recognize before and after us in line and those who were not will be kicked to the back also I don't think it's okay which is why I'm here with those who were before and after me in line I also don't believe I'm famous or in the concept of fame like I believe humans are human like there's no such thing as fame in the big scope of life there's only one famous one. There's only one famous one. And that is God. And that is God. <laughs> Please see this screenshot of Taylor Swift versus Jesus Christ. <laughs> Google Trends, my people. Google Trends shows who is the true famous one. BTS is included in that Google Trends. <laughs> and I continue to say, if there are other areas in need of clarification, please come speak to me in line. Thank you. Like basically come to my face because I feel like when people are behind the screen, they can often uh, be able to unfilter necessary filters that they need when they are approaching somebody to speak to them Usually if people are face to face with other people, you know, you have to be tactful and I feel like this wasn't tactful at all uh, No, yeah a little bit tactful, but not very tactful <laughs> And in person people tend to be a little bit more wise with how they express their thoughts and opinions their friend who I will refer to as Jay also tweeted like three minutes later while I was writing that reply and she said hey not sure why you think it's okay to jump the line just because someone recognized you as a youtuber but do you I guess so again full of assumptions obviously I'm not very pleased to be seeing these tweets 
because even though they're two tweets, like they do affect me. Can this be said in a nicer way without assumptions? Like you're basically assuming that I'm like, I'm like that. Like I cut lines for fun. You know what I mean? I was about to reply to the second tweeter as well, but um, the tweet was deleted. So I went to her profile page and I just tweeted her from her page because I needed to respond. Like I don't really like to leave things without closure or else it makes me anxious. Like I need to know that people know and I need to know that things are clear. So what I said to her was, I don't think making content on YouTube has anything to do with line order. So I'm also not saying like I'm a YouTuber, but I just make content like I just make stuff because I feel like being a YouTuber also has a stigma as well. I just see myself as a person who's making videos and taking pictures and posting them. I feel like not a stigma, but YouTuber has like some sort of air to it, right? Um, and I don't see myself that way. So continuing on, I said, I am with those I recognized before and after me in line. So this half official line can be finalized through an honor system for those who didn't know of the list. Please let me know if you need more info. And I um, attached the screenshot of my response to her friend, but she responded and she said, just so you know, you weren't talking that quietly when you said those girls will let us cut in line. And the funny thing is like, I felt like she totally disregarded my response to her, especially after I took time to respond. But you know, like, like that's life. And um, sometimes you can't expect people to respond to you respectfully or treat you well, humanely. Um, so I just responded to her where she was at in her thought process. And I told her what was said was, cause again assumptions and also like twisting my words the ladies in front of us called us over so we could validate and vouch for our spot because we weren't on the list but we waited four hours they are informing us to find people who we are near in line this is the third time that i'm mentioning this so staff can validate things stay in order and fair by waiting order the funny thing is as well is that I wasn't trying to speak quietly like it's not something that I'm trying to keep a secret that I'm going ahead to find the people that I was with like I'm basically stating like four like three times here I need to go find the people who were with me right but I guess like broken telephone people who we were near are saying like oh they're cutting or like oh they're gonna go find like someone that they know or like oh they're gonna go and cut with like people that they were with or whatever but yeah those girls will let us cut in line is definitely not what I said I was telling Erica the girl who's in front of the girl who's in front of us we're saying come stick together with us so that we can vouch for our spot when the list becomes more finalized. So she responded to me um, and I tried really hard to match to where she was, but often when people are full of emotion and are in the mode to steamroll, they aren't really receptive to anything you say. So she just sent me a roll eyes emoji. And of course I have to respond to her. And I told her if more clarification is required, please come find me like literally like come find me. Don't just send a roll eyes emoji. Don't you want to clear the air? Don't you want to clear things and make things clear? Like, don't you want to finalize and have closure? Like you can't just send a roll eyes emoji. Like, come on now, like be my Okay. Take that out. <sighs> Like, let's be people like, let's actually like talk. Like, like if you want to talk and you're tweeting me to talk, to figure out things out, like, isn't that what you should be doing? Like not just sending a roll eyes emoji. So then I said, yes, please come find me. I think that is a more objective and sound approach. I was going to say mature, but I feel like if you say that's more mature way, then you're also saying that you're immature. So like, I feel like her response was very subjective and emotional. And that's why I said, objective and sound approach so then to try to like calm myself i basically asked like how long have you been here like how long have you been waiting right so then she stopped responding to me and instead someone else from around her which was the the older librarian um, mama lady she responded instead she said i'm with the young lady you which when i was telling michael about this like, I feel like that you, like, I'm kind of confused. Like, was that an error? Was that a typo? Like, I'm with the young lady. You, I arrived, like, you, like, maybe she was saying you arrived and then she forgot to erase it. Or maybe she's just calling me you and addressing me, like, firmly. So I'm with the young lady, you, period. 
that's kind of scary. Um, I arrived at 3.45, she arrived at 4.30. You walked past us in line at approximately 6.30. I know because I recognized you and I Googled you to show my daughter. And then she put a screenshot of my Instagram. I don't know what this is. Like I don't. And now you are dozens of people in front of me, period. So I replied to her and I said, yes, we had to find those who were before and after us and the list has now. So this is now the fourth time I was, I'm explaining the same thing. We will eventually queue after your group. Like if your group is in front of us, then once we organize ourselves, we'll eventually queue and have an, a, an official unofficial line actually in order of when we got to the venue right now it's a matter of sticking with those you recognize in line so each group can reorganize based on memory she says i do understand what's happening but i do not understand how someone who got in line almost two hours after me is now in front of me perhaps the people you're surrounding yourself with cut the line and you innocently rejoin them i don't know so i think here like she's trying to give me the benefit of the doubt which i'm really thankful for but like basically what happened was where we moved blocks we moved from the area that we were all waiting and camping onto across the street where the venue is and where we have to line up for the actual show so during that move like obviously people are rearranged people are confused it's basically unorganized that's how i ended up in front of her is because like everyone's everywhere and we have to find the people who we're close with. But I guess like she didn't really understand that well. So, and like maybe all of them didn't understand that. So then I actually came to find her and I went to the line where they were and I said, um, Miss JK. And she came up and she came to talk to me and she said, oh yes, I was gonna go find you as well because like trying to decipher tweets is very difficult, especially with a character limit. And I basically explained the situation and I feel like they kind of understood it. So anyway, after all that happened, like the clump, was like really big in between the front of the line that was already organized by the list order and the back of the line where people have been starting to queue when they arrive to the venue. And in the middle here was this huge clump of people that basically got kind of shuffled around and rearranged from the camping site of the other street. So for us to reorganize ourselves here and queue back while the front of the line is being made, everyone else has to move back as well so that we could straighten out the line and organize in single file so that we all can get our unofficial numbers. The girl who was in front of the group in front of us, her name is Yumi, and there was another lady with like blue purple hair who also helped organize the line and helped get messages across throughout the line of like 400 people. And so I just felt like nothing was progressing and I went to go talk to Yumi and this other lady to figure out what's going on and basically, it's exactly as I said, there's too much of us in one chunk. We need to move back to straighten out the line so that the list can be made and the line can be organized. I went to the back to let the back people know that they need to move backwards so that we can make space for the chunk. And they said there were people that they saw were cutting and they didn't want to give up their spot, which was what they meant was their physical area that they had situated th themselves, that they were not gonna move from there because they didn't want to give space for people who had arrived after them. They were completely unreasonable. There were voices being raised and cuss words being thrown. And so the lady and I thought maybe it's better to try to get people at the front to squeeze forward so we give more space for the middle chunk. We went over and we were walking back and forth and I was in my platforms. I was also injured in my feet after the concert. I got this injury called ball of foot pain, which is like so original. And it was definitely due to like all the walking back and forth, trying to organize the line and everything like that. It still hurts now and I have to be careful and rest. So lesson learned, bring running shoes next time and then change into your nice shoes later. But anyway, we were in like a predicament, like how do we get this huge chunk to straighten out while having these people at the back refuse to move and these people at the front not having space to move forward at all either. And what's hilarious is like, I noticed that there was a little divot in the street where an inner entrance of the blocks mall was i was like oh my gosh we can straighten into this divot of like 100 meters maybe more like 50 meters 80 meters we can like go into there and like straighten so i basically was telling everyone like let's go into the divot because we need more space to straighten our line and then we can rearrange ourselves and organize ourselves by the time that we arrived 
So basically I had to like usher people into the divot with this purple haired lady and Yumi. So basically we kind of got everyone in and also organized by time of arrival as well. I started at the back where I asked like, is everyone in order from this onwards and they said yes and then i said okay who was who came before you and they said this person who came before you this person who came before you this person who came before you so i basically did that throughout the whole line through this divot and then we got everyone into this little divot and i asked the front now like who who came after you and then we basically like lined them up uh depending on who they said was after them because everyone can recognize you know who they're waiting with for hours this went on for like about four hours and even though we had moved locations at 10 we finally got everyone organized at two and the librarian lady she actually thanked me for like helping organize the line another girl who was a viewer gave me a big hug and she told me like i'm doing a good job and oh my gosh i'm gonna cry it was really hard for me and my feet were hurting but like someone had to do it you know and you can't just be like complaining and not doing anything about it like if you are angry that you think people are cutting in line like you go and do something about it like you go and help organize the line instead of just sitting and sending roll eye symbols <laughs> I felt like I was kind of a scapegoat for people's indignation and maybe their misunderstood indignation but like I, I feel like I was okay with that like I'm glad it was me and not anyone else who was experiencing that stress because I felt like I did a decent job in handling the situation. I feel like one other lady also thanked me for like helping out and keeping things organized. I felt like that was worth it. Like the pain, the injury, the stress was so worth like us having officially unofficial organized line. So it's about like 2 a.m. when the line is finalized and Erica and I had to go pee like really bad from like when we moved spots at 10 p.m. So we've been holding our pee for like four hours and we went to the 24 seven burger shop to use the washroom, but we had to wait 30 minutes for the washroom because there was only one stall and a lot of women. After that, we decided to eat because we were pretty hungry. We ended up being at the most inside of that divot and it was like pretty dark in the corner because we wanted that side with the stairs instead of the side with the glass walls because we could sleep better if it was darker. By the time we're back in our sleeping bag, like all snug and lying down, it's about like 3.30. Um, Erica was trying to go to sleep, so she was closing her eyes and I was playing Maple Story because I was trying to put myself to sleep as well. I start seeing people go past us and up the stairs because that roof area is where the merch was going to be sold so people are already there lining up for 10 a.m merch opening i did see something strange though i saw like a hooded dark figure pass by us and then he kind of disappeared and all of a sudden i saw this the same dark figure come come like really close really fast towards me and like literally i'm lying down i see this big figure like coming like this and i got freaked out and i saw the figure reaching out his hand too literally towards where my bag was and i freaked out i turned around and i got up and i started yelling like excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me i said it four times really loud <laughs> Everyone in the I divot like and probably times. outside on the street probably heard me too. And then he just grabbed something from the floor while I was yelling, excuse me, walked over to the stairs where uh, the merch leads towards and sat down on the stairs, was holding the cigarette butt he picked up and started lighting it and smoking it. And I was like, what the heck? Mind you, the bag that I carried was like a light pink really pretty purse that I brought on Thursday as well. The only reason I brought that bag instead of a backpack was because I didn't have time to reorganize my stuff into a backpack. So I literally just grabbed my purse and went out the door when I was gonna go pick Erica up. And Michael was warning me too, like that looks a little bit like eye catchy, especially if people who are attending the concert or people who are just public bystanders will want to take, they might think that it's of high value. I already had this kind of in mind and I was like, telling Erica, hey, I think we should go put our stuff in the car and like, you know, all of our valuables, let's go put it in the trunk right now. I said it pretty loudly so that everyone else can hear and that he can hear as well so that he knows that I know what he's up to, but also everyone else knows that they should be careful too. After like a minute of silence, I was still kind of like shocked at what happened 
and he was still sitting there smoking his cigarette butt he, he picked up from 10 bottle. centimeters like five like inches away right from my right head here. i looked at him and i was like i'm not letting this scared. slide like i need closure i need to like i can't just like ignore him and he just go off and do his thing he can just come back and try something else so i asked him i was like excuse me what were you trying to do and he didn't reply he just looked at me he just stared at me we were just both staring at each other and i asked him again what were you trying to do and he said i was just trying to get something from close to you and i was like like if you wanted a cigarette butt you could have gotten the one like five meters away you were very close to me and he just told me like be really quiet you female dog and i was just like okay like you trying to teeth me right now and you go cuss me out like no but i also wanted to be careful because in dangerous situations like that anything can happen he could have a weapon he could try something with his brute strength like i don't know what could happen so i don't want him to feel attacked or disrespected or offended so i need to be wise with how i respond so i just kind of stayed silent for a second to collect my thoughts and i told him that was scary like you were very close to me he said again be really quiet you female dog and i just said well i'm sorry if i offended you but you were just close and I was just scared like it was scary and that's the thing too like if you confront someone with how you felt they can't deny that if you're going and accusing them like you tried to steal my bag like they can say no I'm not and what are you up to and you're offending me and I'm gonna now attack you but when you're approaching someone like you were really close to me and I was scared like they can't deny that they, he can't deny he was close to me he was 10 centimeters away from my head and he can't deny that i was scared because that's how i felt so he just up and left he just silently stood up and left and i was like good riddance what are you gonna do there are no holes in what i said and there are 400 other girls here you basically have no power in terms of number plus the police had already previously been called because of our huge clump and the people who were not moving from the back which there was no one else who came after them like all of the people who were in the clump were from the street from before so they should have moved back anyway <sighs> but i'm really glad that that happened to me it was a good learning experience i was scared obviously that was but scary. i was, was really scary. glad that, that it was wasn't scary. anyone we're else someone in who could have actually Make been sure sleeping and had their whole purse stolen away. or if like something bad could have happened like if someone responded to the situation and um the wrong way things could have unfolded and maybe people could have got hurt it was a thing i'm i'm glad <laughs> but let me go back to like the twitter the next morning stood in line got our wristbands erica and i went to go eat after we got merchandise while we were eating lunch i was like it was kind of weighing on my heart like what happened with the twitter girls and how like it wasn't fully fully resolved with them personally i just felt like i didn't want them to feel like i had a bad impression of them or that i thought they were stupid or like i didn't want them to think that I felt a certain way or felt any animosity towards them even though I kind of did I just feel like I didn't want them to feel that way so I was thinking what should I do like how should I wisely handle this situation even though it's over like it's not really over in our hearts you know what I mean I told Erica like I'm gonna try talking to them like before we actually get into the venue so we had to line up four times the first time was lining up across the street camp out site and then the second time was lining up on the venue property in the unofficial line and the third time was lining up in the morning to get our wristbands and then the fourth time is lining up again to actually get into the venue already it was between the third and fourth wait time and so i decided okay at this fourth time that we're lining up i'm gonna go find them and talk to them and i thought the best way to express that i don't have any animosity is to give them a hug but i don't want to make them feel like oh i'm better than you and i'm forgiving you but just to find a wise way to dissolve any hard feelings i was looking for their username i was like is s here s is s here and uh she wasn't in j standing she was just waiting with her friend the night before so I was like, okay, then is uh, Jay here? No one really responded for like two seconds, but the librarian said, it's this lady right here. And she pointed her out and she was like, oh yeah, that's me. And she kind of looked like not very excited. <laughs> of course not she sent me a roll eyes emoji and here I am like looking for her. So I just told her like, um, is it okay if I give you a hug? And then everyone's just like, what? And then I was like, I want to thank you for your sense of justice. Like, can I give you a hug? 
and then she was like thank you and then she let me hug her so we hugged each other i feel like at that moment like my heart just melted any feelings of hurt or like indignation or annoyance i guess it just all melted like i felt like i could love her you know what i mean and then she actually thanked me she said like thank you for your help yesterday and i was like oh my gosh like she didn't apologize but still she thanked me and during the third lineup like some of the people we had in front of us also went to cut the line like in front but um, they called us over to like go with them. And Erica and I were like, oh, I don't know, like what should we do? Like it's kind of scary and like we kind of want to, but like we kind of don't, but like, you know. The librarian and the people around her and also Jay, they were saying like, oh yeah, like thanks for not doing that because like we're all trying to be fair and we're all trying to respect each other as army, but you even like had the chance to go, but you didn't, even though they're saying the night before like oh we want this to be as fair as possible but then the next day if they get a chance to go in the line then sure like go on in and then she called them a hypocrite <laughs> i was like oh my gosh but yeah i just told that group i was like yeah actually like we kind of did have a chance to go like we were called over but i felt like this is our spot you know what i mean 328 that's our spot people did cut there was about 25 people who weren't in the unofficial line who actually got an early wristband during the third lineup but it was only 25 people i was scared if it was like 80 but just 25 people got in by cheating like that's not too bad it wouldn't help if i was part of that either and it would like totally be contradictory to everything that i was fighting for the night before that caused my injury on both my feet and my injury on my nail bed I feel like this video is gonna be so long. Please let me know if you have any crazy concert stories. I feel like so much happened during this last 33 hours of concert time. I almost got robbed. I got injured. I was being blasted on Twitter at the same time. It was a great experience. I really am so thankful that all of that happened. Let me know your crazy stories down below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification to be notified right when new videos drop. That's usually the time that I do take to reply to your comments. I post daily stories on my Instagram and photos here and there. So I'll check you out on these platforms if they are platforms that you use. That's it for this super long story time video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye.